When I was uh, rather young, just finished my graduate work and been ordained, my classmate had invited me to go to Italy to meet his relatives, for he, his family was rooted in Italy. What a great adventure, I thought. I was young. I could do it. We could climb. We could do things a lot better than I can today. So off we went on the adventure. I even took a few Italian lessons so I could speak to his relatives. I was thought I had read up enough. I thought I was ready, well prepared for the journey. But since it was my first trip to Italy, I had made the fatal flaw of most people. I knew I would have to go for an extended time, and so I thought I need to take everything I could possibly use, or perhaps uh, at least uh, prepare for every eventuality. So I went to the luggage store and I bought the biggest suitcase I could find. Now, this is an era before all airport security and weighing of luggage and searching of baggage and uh, the wonderful invention of wheels on suitcases. <laughs> so I went with my friend with this rather large suitcase. And so it was then that I found myself for these next several weeks hauling it onto airplanes, dragging it onto trains, and bumping it onto buses. There was one particular time that we had visited his uncle, and he was taking us from his house to another train where we would visit down in a southern part of Italy. It would be a rather long journey. His uncle said, I will take care of the ticketing. We were glad, for he spoke, of course, the language easier. But when he came back with the tickets, he said, here, I, I don't want you, I didn't travel first class. He said, only the Americans and the British travel first class. I said, I am American, I'll travel for some. <laughs> but I said, all right. He said, don't no, travel like all of us. I just bought you the ticket I bought. OK. So we get on the train. Well, it's not a first class ticket. It's not a second class ticket. It's a third class ticket. All right. So we get in the back of the coaches. We find that a third class ticket on this train meant you had the right to stand <laughs> for three hours. So there I am in the hallway of this train with this large suitcase. So every time someone wanted to move, I had to move me in the suitcase. That was a long three hours. And then as we get to the train station, we knew we had to switch trains. So I thought, all right, we'll get off and go on to another platform. Not in Italy. We had to walk a mile to the next terminal. Now my friend says, we haven't got a lot of time, so we'll just walk. Who needs a cab? I need a cab. <laughs> so it's 90 degrees. I'm dragging this suitcase. I, halfway there, I was ready to give away the contents of the suitcase and just abandon it all and just buy new. I was so angry by the time we got on the next train. I was angry at his uncle. I was ready to kill my friend. I was angry at the Italian idea of separating terminals of trains by a mile. I was even getting angry at God. It was 90 degrees and hot. It was very much ready to ruin the whole trip, ruin my experience of the people, the culture, the land, the beauty, because of my suitcase. I blamed everybody. It was me. I packed it. I bought it. I dragged all that stuff that I was sure I had to have, half of which I brought home unused. And then I remember the gospel when I was reflecting this week. <laughs> Travel light. You know, that's not a suggestion. That's a command of the Lord. <laughs> Travel light. It wasn't just about you and I on vacation. It's going through life. We do the same thing. We drag all of that baggage through our life. And it can ruin our vision of God. It can cause us to blame everybody else. It will not allow me to experience all the joy of my life because I keep dragging this thing that I was sure I had to have when I didn't need half of what I was dragging. Now, you and I need to take from this gospel then the lesson. How will we rid ourselves of the baggage? First, you've got to know it. It's hard to know what it is. It's just like when you go to travel in this summer, maybe. You're going to lay out your clothes somewhere before you put it in a suitcase. And a good advice was to me, put everything on the bed you need and take half of it off and then take that with you. That's not bad advice in life. You don't need all of that baggage you and I are carrying through life. But how do you determine what you need to get rid of? Maybe it's about the way you feel. Here are some ideas. 
Maybe it is that you are just exhausted right now in life. You feel spent. You don't have a lot of energy. It's not about something physical. It's about something emotional. I'm trying to control everything. I control every relationship. I try to control the outcome of everything that's going on. Anything that's imperfect or flawed, I try to make right in me and in everybody else. I'm exhausted trying to control all of those things instead of letting God do a little bit of the guidance of my life. Letting God be what God promised God would be, a shepherd. I think I know better, and I will try to control everything. I drag that baggage with me constantly. The need to make everything right and perfect and need to make everybody around me the same. I need to let go of some of that control, or I will always be exhausted. I need to allow God to shepherd me. That control is wearing me out. And sometimes it is that I'm dragging along with me a lot of loss and brokenness. Oh, someone who has died and meant a lot to me, and that is heavy on my heart. It'll always be heavy on my heart. I have that loss of a broken relationship, or of someone who has in many ways in different slights and deeper ways betrayed me, not been the friend I thought or the person I had intended them or believed them to be. And I carry that loss and the loss of so much in my life. I will not allow it to be mended or healed or touched by God. Remember the woman who had a great loss in her life of her health? She grabbed the tassel of the Lord's cloak, and in that grabbing for Christ was healed. I need to open the wounds of my life. The baggage of that woundedness is really destroying me. It's hurt. It's betrayal. It's a sense of loss that I don't need to carry with me constantly through my life. There are some of us who are carrying within our own heads the words of others who mute and even destroy the goodness that God said is within me. God created me, gave me life. He created each one of us, named of the daughter and the son, and said, you are good in my eyes, holy in my sight. But there have been other voices and words of people that have tried to mute and diminish that goodness. And I carry those words when I need to let them go. That's baggage I don't have to handle. Those are relationships I don't have to maintain. Not if they're denying the very goodness that God has gave, given and imparted within me, the blessings God has bestowed upon me. Some of us, too, have little hope for the future. I have forgotten that the God of my past that brought me this far, the God who continues to love me now, is the God of my future. It's as if God were only the past. The God of the future is a God I can trust, for the God has brought me this far from the past. I carry the baggage of no hope for the future as if the future holds no God. God is always there awaiting me, calling me to something new to a constant relationship, not to an emptiness, but to a blessedness with God. So that's part of the baggage I don't need to drag with me. I learned a good lesson. I travel now with a carry-on. I don't care. I figure whatever it is, I'll find a way to get it somewhere else or I didn't need it in the first place. I learned a good lesson in that trip, but I think we need to learn a lesson in our trip of life. When I journey, I don't need to journey with all that baggage. I don't need to take more of me on the trip. I need to take more of God on the journey. I'll travel a lot lighter, and I'm sure I'll be a lot joyful, a lot happier. I'll enjoy the trip.